What is up, my peoples? This is your guy, Cly, and welcome back to that thrifting series. I want to go ahead and apologize for not having videos up these past few weeks, but I've been a bit indisposed helping my girlfriend out with a Fallout cosplay. And it went over well. Don't get me wrong, I do not regret any of the work I did for it, but it did leave me with little time to record. So, yeah, that's that. Also, I want to apologize for the lack of cat in this video, but they're both being very adorable taking naps, and I just can't bring myself to disturb them. So, let's jump right in. Today's video is going to be a wee bit different, at least when it comes to theme. I have a good 50-50-ish mix of dumpster dived to thrifted items, but it's going to be a topic that I haven't covered in detail. It's all going to be about stuff for the kitchen. And before those of you out there who have a bit of a germ issue get worried about the stuff that I bring in from the trash into my kitchen, I have several rules. I do not take anything that has been sitting in what I call the dumpster soup. I do not take anything that has been in a bag with either nasty organic materials or nasty inorganic materials, to be honest. Just anything that promotes bacterial growth to that extent, nor do I take anything that is in a bag or box with broken glass. I do not want to ingest it or get it on my flesh. I have already had enough encounters with broken glass just for my clumsiness. I'd rather not have it from someone else's clumsiness. Last but not least, I make sure to very thoroughly sterilize these objects. That being said, let's jump into this first item here. Don't worry, just because it's in a very manky looking box does not mean it came out of a dumpster. This is actually a curb surfed item from my girlfriend's parents' neighborhood. You know, the same people who find Prada with the tag still on. So, it's going to be something nice. Let's just slide it up. Oh, and because of all of the crafting I've been doing for cosplay bits, the table is going to be a little bit dirtier than I'd like, despite my very quick haphazard cleaning before I started recording. So let's just go ahead and get my hand around here, try not to bump the mic. There we go. This is a really nice pizza stone. Let me just reorient it so that it's easier to read. It's a very nice decorative, as the printout over there calls it, a Brinker pizza stone. I have no idea what that means. I have never heard of this brand, and I cannot find much information about it online in the quick little cursory search that I did. But it's a nice thing, and to be honest, I've used pizza stones in the past, and I've missed having one. So this is actually hand glazed. I don't know if it's hand painted, but it's definitely hand glazed. It's got a little bit of handcrafted stuff going on and let me just flip it over it's not really been used which doesn't surprise me with the neighborhood it came from they just get something because they think it's neat never use it and throw it out i appreciate that oh also i'm gonna probably send a little nasally my my body is fighting off the con crud we recently went to a convention and i think i caught something yay large amounts of people and children mmm recipe for disaster but yeah this is a very nice pizza stone very clean and this is actually the side you cook on if you've never used a pizza stone do not use the glazed side now I have absolutely no idea the value of this item like I said I couldn't really find out much information but I'm not complaining also I just felt something rub my foot I think the cat woke up because he heard me talking so you might see him in the next shot. Speaking of, oh, nope, there he is, he's in this shot. And very clumsy, he was hopping on the table and didn't realize there was something there. Hi, little dude. Let's go on to the next item. All right, now what I have here is a nice set of Pyrex measuring cups. Once again, these do come out of the garbage. They were fortunately in a very nice, still closed box. I have the 1, 2, 4, and 8 cup variety. And what's funny is my girlfriend's mom actually tried to uh, claim these as her own. Not aggressively. She's a really nice woman and I love her to death. But yeah, she heard we got these and she's like, ooh, I'll take them. 
And my girlfriend had cut off. It's like, no, no, these are ours. And I completely agree. I love this brand. I honestly, I've always been too cheap to buy it. I've always gotten like the dollar plastic measuring cups. My girlfriend had another chew copper. And so I learned it's actually worth paying me a little bit of extra money to get a nice one. Also, don't worry about the spots on these. They are a little dirty, but that's because our dishwasher has gone from being a dishwasher to a dish, dish rinser, and in some cases a dish dirtier. I don't know why, but it's putting grease on everything right now. And maintenance isn't doing a darn thing about it. So, yeah, I get to get to look around inside of our dishwasher and try to cleanse it. On to the next item. Now, this little guy is something special. My girlfriend picked this up for me while she was thrifting. Only cost her a dollar. But I love it. It is a tea diffuser made to look like a little robot. Specifically, one done in the 1950s, early 1900s, retro-futuristic style, which I absolutely adore. One of the many reasons why I love Fallout so much. I love the aesthetic, not so much the mentality. But, yeah, it's got adjustable arms so that you can put it in any size glass you can think of. For the most part, anyway. It all depends on the depth. If it's too shallow, you're going to have a few issues. But, other than that, it's really nice. Pops open here. You can put whatever loose leaf tea you like in it. And I just think it's a neat little thing. Now, a lot of you know how much I love coffee, and I've mentioned in previous videos that I'm a bit of a coffee snob. Well, yes, I do own a couple of French presses. I used to own a third one. Well, okay, specifically, I used to own one, but it got broken when the apartment complex sent someone to resurface our counters, and despite my best efforts to put it in a place where I didn't think he'd knock it over, he knocked it over. So I went out and bought a couple of replacements. The previous one was thrifted, as are these. I paid $7 for a, the one that broke, which was this size. Didn't really like the aesthetic, but it was the only one I could find. And since then, I have gotten my hands on these two, which were much cheaper, and I much prefer the aesthetic of. So, blessing in disguise, I don't begrudge the guy. He just was not good at his job. So I paid $3 for the big guy, and the little guy I've only paid a dollar for. These are great for coffee, but I'll admit, I more frequently use them for loose leaf green teas. And if they have a few water spots or look a little odd, once again, blame the dishwasher. Okay, the dish dirtier. Dish greaser? Either way, it's having weird issues. Yeah, there's really not much more I can say about these. They're very well made. They're from Bodum, and I like them. Oh, and they were cheap. $4 total right here. On to the next item. Speaking of coffee and tea, I happened to find a mug while thrifting a few days ago, and I just had to have it. It was only 50 cents, and that's my grab-it price, you know? If I see something that even remotely strikes my interest in its 50 cents, I'm gonna take it. So... Yeah, the motto speaks to me. Even though I'm not a dad, at least not yet, unless you count the cats. I really like the saying on it, where if it's not broken, take it apart anyway, lose some of the pieces, and then it will be. And yeah, I have had many a situation like that. Fortunately, not recently, I'm actually pretty good at figuring out the issue and fixing it, or just putting it back together in its already broken state. But... I will say I'm still notorious for having extra screws, and honestly, I think taking apart electronics and putting them back together is how the screw industry, at least for the little guys, is formed. There's always going to be extra screws, and you know, I think they're just reproducing. So, on the topic of mugs, let's go ahead and just bring these out. I've got one, they're counting with Clyde, two, three, four, Five and six. Let's just do a little bit of switcheroo. There we go. I'm falling from my old trap. There we are. They're not perfect, but that'll do. 
Now these are these are something special. I paid 50 cents each for these. Keep that in mind. So this was $3 right here. These are little eight ounce espresso cups. And let's just rotate it. There we go. These are Le Creuset espresso cups. They are not ceramic. These are stoneware. These are actually very nice, very durable, and a complete set. Now, they do not come with saucers when sold by the manufacturer, so I'm not missing anything. This is the complete set. The complete set <laughs> sells for $60. If you want an individual one, new it's $10. This right here would be $10. If you wanted it used, you're looking at $6. So one of these costs twice of what I paid for everything. I paid 50 cents each. I paid $3 for a $60 set of espresso cups. And sadly, they are not for me. These are a present for my girlfriend's mom, and by extension her dad, though her mom prefers espresso more than her dad does. He likes just black coffee. So yeah, she's getting a really nice espresso cup set for her birthday, which is actually this weekend. And yeah, that's actually one of the reasons why I had to jump into recording this video so that I can get this all wrapped up. I wanted an extra day off, but eh, what you gonna do? So yeah, there we go. Let's just put the number over here. I still got a little bit of sticker residue, but we have taken off all of the labels. I'm going to be hitting it with a little bit of Goo Gone later to remove all of that. Yeah, I'm still in awe over finding these all together on a cart. I think you might've seen his blue paw. I don't know what he did to get it, but he's got a blue paw under there. It kind of freaked me out. I actually started running around the apartment trying to figure out where he got it and what he stained with it. It's still a mystery to this day, and it's been like that for almost a week. On to the next and final item. All right, these are the final items for the video. And they're dumpster dived, of course. What we have here is the Nespresso Ascenza and the Nespresso Arrochino Milk Frother. The Ascenza is a pod-based espresso maker, which uses bar pressure versus steam pressure. And fortunately, the pods are actually pretty cheap to get a refillable one. And yeah, it's a really nice thing. Uh, they're generally sold as a combo for about $330. I paid nothing. Yay. And they both work. Now, I'm actually going to be selling the Ascenza to a family friend. I'm keeping the Arachino for myself, because I like frothed milk, he does not. So it works out. And even cooler, let me just put the cat in my lap on the floor, there we go. I've tested this with just water so far, and it heats the water so quickly it's not even funny. In fact, I'm thinking about just using this as a hot kettle for tea. What it does... It uses a magnetic whisk, which is really cool. And yeah, it just circulates the water or milk and heats up very quickly. It took me to 160 degrees in only a couple of seconds. So I could make a nice cup of tea with this. And yes, I do have the powered base. Oh, it also, if you hold the button down instead of just tapping it, it will actually froth your cold liquid or circulate your cold liquid. So I can get some cold froth, I can get some hot froth, and you know what? My espresso maker might be able to do some nice steamed milk, but it can't do a cold froth. So this little guy is going to come in handy. It also does have the spare whisk base stored in the cap here. Magnets! But yeah, I like it. I like it a lot, actually. Oh, and I might as well point out, if I wanted to buy this by itself new, this would be over $100. Or 60 if I wanted to go used slash refurbished. But I think I'll pay what I paid. And that's going to round it out. Oh, actually, no, it's not going to round it out. Yes, I did thoroughly clean these before testing. I cannot stress that enough. Heck, 
This guy was barely used. It still had the plastic on the metal grate here. So these were well taken care of, just not really used. And I missed a spot there when I was second washing it because I sponged it down, but I missed a little foam. Oh, well. Until next time, this is your guy, Cly, signing off.